Dana Lee and I'm a fisheries biologist with FishBio. For our analysis, we looked at data from red surveys. When salmon build reds, they use their tail to flip over rocks, exposing the undersides which don't have algae on them. In this way, you can see the general pattern of a red, and then we can go in and take measurements, such as a GPS location of where it is, uh, the size of the red, which can tell us how big the fish was that made it, as well as other environmental data, like water temperatures, depths, velocities. We can determine what sort of environmental conditions uh, are most favorable for salmon when they spawn. Our findings indicate that there were several hot spots in the river where salmon tended to spawn year after year, regardless of whether fish had already spawned in those locations. This is a process known as superimposition. Salmon that are spawning on top of a previously constructed red generally dig up the gravel and often the eggs that are inside. During the years with the highest salmon abundance, more than half the reds in the prime spawning habitat experience superimposition. One of the primary goals of salmon habitat restoration is to increase the quantity of available spawning habitat. This information about the location of salmon spawning can help us to inform the design of future restoration projects. Since we know that salmon generally like to spawn in a few concentrated areas, we can examine what sort of environmental conditions are at these locations and try to use that to recreate other spawning habitat within the river. Much of our analysis focused on water temperatures, which for a cold water fish like salmon are very important. 55 degrees is generally considered the threshold above which spawning temperatures can become lethal. We found that at the height of the recent drought in 2014 and 2015, many of the reds were constructed at water temperatures higher than this threshold, sometimes as high as 61 degrees Fahrenheit. The findings of this study show that salmon on the Stanislaus River have very little flexibility in their spawn timing. While they can wait sometimes to enter the river, maybe up to a week, like we saw during the drought, uh, once they arrive in the river, they generally need to spawn right away, even if water temperatures are higher than these lethal thresholds. One of our key management recommendations in response to this finding is trying to hold back enough water in reservoirs to maintain a cold water pool. This water can be released in the fall to make sure temperatures are cold enough for salmon to spawn. A healthy salmon run brings ecological, cultural, and economic value to rivers in California. Studies like this one can ensure effective management of these salmon populations to make sure that they persist even under periods of changing environmental conditions.